Hello friends, welcome back to our series on mastering parallel programming in C Sharp. Today, in part 7, we are diving into a spinning primitives, their pros and cons, and how they fit into the world of parallel programming. So, before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button, and don't forget to click on the little bell icon, that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX that is parallel framework extension libraries in C Sharp. If you have been following along with my previous videos in this series, you might recognize this diagram. Take a moment to glance at it. Here we have two pillars of a structured data parallelism, P link queue that is parallel link queue and parallel class. We have covered these two along with task parallelism and concurrent collections in detail. Today our focus shifted to a spinning primitives. A spinning primitives explained pros and cons. Okay, so let's first understand what a spinning primitives are. The spinning primitives are a way of keeping task active while waiting for the resources instead of pausing them. It avoids the cost of context switching and kernel transition. Okay, let's understand in this way. Let's say a spinning primitives are nothing but the technique used in the parallel programming when multiple tasks or threads are running at the same time and need to access shared resources like memory or data. Instead of putting a task to sleep more when it has to wait, a spinning primitives keeps it active and continuously checks if it can access the resources it needs. This process is nothing but the spinning overall. Okay, so now this question popped up in our mind, why are spinning primitives needed, right? So let's understand. In regular programming, when a task or thread can't proceed because a resource is busy, it might get paused and then resume when the resource is free, right? However, this pausing and resuming task takes time and involves a process called context switching which adds overhead and slow down the program. In some cases, especially when the wait time is very short, it's faster to keep the task busy, that means spinning, instead of putting it to sleep and then waking it up, right? The spinning primitives are helpful because they avoid the overhead of pausing and waking up the task and it allows us faster access when the resource becomes available. So now let's discuss these points to understand the need of spinning primitives in much more in detail. So what are those points? Number one point, avoiding content switching overhead. What does it mean? As I said earlier, in traditional programming, when a task cannot proceed, it gets paused. So pausing and resuming involves context switching, which takes time and consumes system resources that we wanted to avoid. That's why the spinning primitives are needed. Number two reason is handling short waits times efficiently. If the resource will be available very shortly, then spinning, that is the actively waiting, can be faster than putting the thread to sleep. The process of sleeping and waking up a thread can be more time consuming than just keeping it active for a brief wait, right? The third Third reason is reducing latency. A spinning avoids the extra steps involved in putting a thread to sleep and waking it up. So this can help the program respond faster when the resource becomes available. Number four reason is minimize performance cost. A spinning primitives are useful when tasks require quick, low cost synchronization as they minimize performance states associated with managing thread state. Last not but the least reason is optimize for high contention short duration scenario. Let's consider the scenario where multiple tasks frequently need to access shared resource and the lock will be held for a very short time. The spinning can be more efficient in this scenario. Okay, so now let's talk about it pros and cons. Pros, that is advantages of the spinning primitives. The number one advantage is faster for shorter waits. If the resources will be very soon, a Spinning can be quicker than putting the task to sleep and waking it up later. Number two advantage is avoiding overhead. A spinning eliminates the need for the extra steps involved in pausing and waking up task, which saves time. Number three advantage is efficient in certain scenarios. Okay, so consider the scenario when many tasks are fighting over a resources for short periods, a spinning can reduce delays. Coming to the cons part, that is disadvantage of a spinning primitives. Number one disadvantage is waste CPU time. When a task is spinning, it's just checking over and over again for the resource to become available. If the wait is long, this wastes valuable CPU time that could be used for something else, right? Number two disadvantage is not ideal for long waits. Why I'm saying this? Because if the resource is going to take a while to become free, a spinning is inefficient. In such cases, it's better to let the task slip and resume when it's ready as a spinning will just burn CPU cycle unnecessarily. Number three disadvantage is harder to manage. Using a spinning primitives requires careful design. If not handled properly, they can lead to performance issues especially if the program runs on a system with limited processing power. Now let's discuss types of the spinning primitives. So they are a specific implementation of the concept of spinning primitives 
which involve continuously checking for a condition rather than putting it a thread to sleep mode. So a spin lock is used for locking resources by making thread spin until they acquire the lock. Whereas a spin weight is a more refined approach that combines a spinning with occasional yielding to reduce CPU waste over time. These both techniques aim to manage thread synchronization efficiently when the expected wait time is very short. Anyway, we will learn these two in detail in upcoming videos. Okay, so that brings me to end up my session today. To sum up, we explored what spinning primitives are and why they are crucial in parallel programming. We discussed their pros and cons and provided a brief overview of a specific types such as spin lock and spin weight. I will be covering these two in more detail in upcoming videos. So stay tuned. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.